talk to you about technology today because that is the thing that seems to be reinvigorating both patients and practice because of the fact that the whole world has become very technologically oriented. So I'm going to show you, but I'm going to cover not just the serious PI stuff, which, by the way, we just want another big case up here, um, which affects everybody in the United States, but the uh, I'm going to talk also about the value of this to your patients in terms of the marketing, too, because they're both important. Different kinds of tests, but they're both important. So move forward slide. This is what's going on out there. I, the, the thing that kind of triggered me to develop all this new technology, including software, is the fact that I was in uh, I was in Amsterdam, and I noticed everybody with bigger and bigger smartphones, and, and I noticed that everybody was on them. You go look around anywhere, what do you see? People are on their smartphones all the time. So I realized that if you're going to want to reach out and touch your patients, you're probably going to want to do it via the smartphone because of the fact that everybody's using them, they're getting all their information from them, everything funnels through the smartphone, so that's why I developed this this thing called eScan, which I'll talk about, but essentially you can see it here, we send the test to the phone, and it's become a huge deal because of the fact that it reinforces your message to the patient and keeps them, gets them emotionally tied into what you do. It's, it's because of the fact that it's personal, so you send this personal test, shows up on the screen and instead of like a general pamphlet on chiropractic it's actually personal it's about them personally which is why it works so well it's powerful that way is the audio on no I already showed that video though okay you're not getting the audio though no they saw this a few minutes ago okay All right, so um, obviously you know what that means, but who wants to be that guy? These days it's really not a good way to be, and uh, so it's important to remember that, and we want to be the, the person that, that uh, they go to because of the fact they trust, and, and the way to do that is to use technology. Even the mechanics these days, I took my uh, car in to have the alignment done. They gave me a, a, a printout which had red and green um, markers telling with numbers on them telling me exactly how what the alignment was pre and post verifying and validating what I do what they were doing exactly so that's why it's so valuable to do uh, one of the things I point out is that everybody's got their st spinal story and the key is you need an amplifier to bring that out because the fact is that the patients forget about it themselves they don't realize that they've got problems because the fact we get habituated, we get accommodated to the issues that we've got, we don't really feel them after a while, uh, just like you don't feel your watch, and by putting an amplifier in and, and blowing up and bringing out all the problems, you can actually see what's going on with them, and it leads to the patient actually wanting to take action. That's one of the most important things about using technology is when the patient sees it uh, showing on a screen something that they have forgotten about and it becomes this patient awareness tool, it leads them to take action and ask, what can I do about this? And since you're the one delivering the message when you use technology, they see you as being the one credible, the one that can actually answer the question, which is what I see happening on a continuous basis. So there's two kinds of tests. The static EMG is, think of it as an electronic form of palpation. And what we're doing is we're touching down the probes to the skin and get a quick reading of muscle activity as the patient's in a neutral, standing neutral posture. Um, you can see it as an electron, electronic form of palpation at minimum. Uh, and what it does basically is gives you an idea of the muscle tension patterns about the spine. And it shows how they're compensating for subluxation. Uh, again, it makes this very real to them which leads them wanting to do something about it. It's one of the most valuable things. And also, it's really wonderful for tracking progress. As far as the e-scan thing I was talking about, it's a new form of electronic business card, essentially, where you're actually taking and sending to this patient. And this is a patented tool. You send to the patient, and, it, and the cool thing is that we I designed this using email, not anything, not using a, an app on purpose. There's over 900 apps out there, a, thousand, a million, sorry, 900,000 to a million apps out there. People are kind of sick of apps. And so what I did was I used email, and one of the side uh, or benefits of it or the byproducts of it was the fact 
that the patient received it now three times. They got three messages from you. One was on their phone, the second on their iPad, and the third on their computer. Now, what's cool about it is that it actually has, at the bottom, it has your contact information in there, indelibly, you know, in the graphic, which turns into an electronic business card. The shocking part was the number of patients that had received this. The first thing they said in beta testing was, cool. The second thing they said, and this really, really showed a real serious um, issue that we have in the chiropractic profession. When patients see the value of chiropractic and they want to see you um, after they're done with their issues, they have a problem at home um, with regards to people saying, why are you still seeing the chiropractor? You know, you go to see a surgeon, you have surgery done, you're done. And the number of people that said once they got this test on their phone 10 seconds after doing the test at the chiropractor's office, they said, wow, now I can send this to my husband or my wife or my sister or my brother to show them why I'm uh, seeing my chiropractor. And of course, their friend or their, their husband, their wife, whatever, received your contact information in this email where you can actually put an ad in here, need an adjustment, whatever. You can do anything you want to in here, which leads to a lot of feedback. The thing that's strange to me, though, and the thing that was really amazing was how many posted it on Facebook. All of them forwarded it to somebody, but, but the ones that posted it on Facebook, um, one of the things about that that was cool was over 160 friends exist on each one's Facebook uh, profile at this point, which means that 160 people are getting your uh, contact information in this cool graphic. Another new thing in the EM, in the static EMG world is is this EP stress score, electrophysiological stress score. A uh, study done at uh, uh, by the VA hospital found that uh, the VAS score. Um, and the static EMG tracked each other with a correlation of about 0.99. There's two groups, 30, uh, 30 that were non-responders. They didn't respond to care over, a th I think it was a three-month period. And the other group, which did respond to care, their VAS score went from, I think it was something like 8.8 .8 to 6 in the non-responders and went from uh, 6 to 1 on the responders. And the static EMG results changed also. So what I simply did and what they did in the study was they took all the readings, the values, the muscle activity values in microvolts about the whole spine and you end up with a single number which makes it very easy for you to, to use by taking a look at the beginning and the end. This is a pre and post adjustment we did and you can see the change from 253 to 108. Uh, so it's a really great way to track progress over time. It makes it simple. You don't have to look at the bars so much anymore. Uh, the other thing that was interesting was people questioned the reproducibility of static EMG, which at this point everybody knows is always having to do with, uh, with the user, if, if anything at all. Uh, the device works really well, but one thing we've also found with the EP stress score was that when you do the patient, uh, when you test the patient standing, which is a much more valid test because you're standing, which means you're going to elicit the abnormal muscle compensation pattern. When seated, you don't really see that getting an ergonomic study of the chair, sometimes because they're standing, they're going to move back and forth. So we've noticed this thing where people say, well, why do the bars, here's an example, the bars go from the right side to the left. Well, there's a little bit of sway, but when you sum all the readings, guess what? The difference between this test, which is a pre and, and a post test done five minutes apart, was 10 millionths of a volt. So they're almost exactly the same no matter what the numbers, no matter which uh, direction the bars are going. So that's really helped to establish clearly, that yes, the reproducibility is there, and yes, there's going to be some motion in it. But clinically, there's more value to doing a standing test because it's more of a stress test. Very easy to interpret this now with the EP stress score. You can just look at the data, and the key is to see it as a baseline. You're doing the test over a period of time. And this baseline is one that you use to track how they're doing. Also, the two things that are really important to remember in this is that super high readings and super low readings are your problem areas. Uh, this, when you palpate, and the simple, this is in the, the book, I think it's pain management. If you palpate and you feel high muscle tension, uh, you palpate, you feel there's, there's what appears to be muscle spasm. Muscles are hard, tense, and the readings are high, that's, that's hyperactivity or spasm. If you palpate and find the readings are high and there's low readings, so if you palpate and you feel muscle tension but there's low readings, that's chronic. That's low. Uh, those low readings are uh, fatigued muscles. They shut down and bulk up. So the muscles will perform the same uh, action as ones that are electrically active. 
but do so by simply shortening up and bulking up, and that's what leads to uh, these low readings. So both of them are important, very easy to look for, but the stress score makes it simple. Oh, and yes, the, I was trained at NASA, and we've done a lot of work with Service CMG. Um, I've taught at, at all the schools, including CMCC. I don't know why this is here. Um, I don't remember why I put it there. It just shows you what happens with patients to see this because of the fact that it, it really helps them to visualize what's going on and at least you can see how emotional they get over it. It actually works extremely well to keep them involved. Now, we talk about the, now let's go on to the PI world. Um, how do you use it? The truth is that, this is an example of an attorney, this attorney just wrote me this, uh, what is it, a couple months ago. Thank you, David, for making the unseen known to the unbelieving. Um, his, this attorney has seen Every one of his cases since he started sending the, the, his, his uh, uh, PI patients, when he started sending them to a chiropractor um, to do the myovision test, every time he's done that, his cases have settled at least 10 times more than offered. Um, and so this has been amazing for him. And as an attorney, he, in fact, I'm speaking at um, a thing he's doing for attorneys in Washington next, um, next month. But you can see it's very simple. We're measuring muscle activity up on the top, and we're graphing that activity. In the bottom, we're graphing range of motion. And, and the most recent studies show that endpoint range of motion really doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, oftentimes, you'll see these are a good examples. You see an individual with um, normal range of motion, both in the individual here on the left and the right. The person on the left in full flexion, you can see their muscles. Left is blue, right is red. The muscles have shut off completely and they have pretty good range of motion. Here they have pretty good range of motion, but in flexion you can see the muscles fire like crazy. You cannot fake this, and this uh, clearly shows that there's injury on the right side. This one on the left shows that there's nothing wrong at all. The muscles are supposed to go into relaxation and flexion. This simple thing before the court presented in every case establishes injury. And the, the truth is, what's the IME doing? And more recently, I've seen this, and, you know, Greg does IMEs, but a lot of the IMEs in general don't measure anything. And one of the reasons, I've always wondered, why don't they measure anything, you know, and they're, they're not interested in using this. And it's a great thing for you. It gives you a huge opportunity. Talk about silver lining in the cloud, uh, in every cloud. The um, opportunity here is that they're not going to measure anything, and you're going to, if you do, you're never going to lose. When I designed all this stuff, I thought it was unfair that, you know, in the world typically treated MDs as having more credibility in the courtroom than DCs. And when I designed this stuff, I thought, you know, I'm going to level the playing field with this. Well, we didn't just level the playing field. We dominate it now. So if you really want to win these and you want to be respected by the courts and everyone else, using technology makes it, using the myovision in this way, makes it such that they have no choice because of the fact you use data. And data wins over opinion 100% of the time. But why won't they use it? Well, we had, I can tell you, personally, we had one case where the insurance companies did send a PI patient to a neurologist who did own a myovision and did use it, and I didn't need to testify in this case because the fact he testified for me. The data, the, the tool's objective, it tells the truth. Greg always talks about telling the truth, and this is what this does. It's like a lie detector for back pain, and that neurologist presented the data saying this guy's injured. And end of story, that was it. So I think the reason they don't use it is IMEs don't want to know the truth. They, they want to support and maintain their position. There's nothing wrong. So they keep receiving checks from the insurance company. So that's what this is coming from. 
Um, but the point is when you use this, there is no, it's, it's indisputable evidence. Uh, one of the things we found in this case, which we'll have the court record soon, if everybody wants it, email David at MyOvision, and I'll send you a six-hour uh, court record uh, jury trial where the six hours on the MyOvision itself where we won the case. Uh, Medici up in Washington was the one that was uh, was testifying. But the point is that the jury just loves information. They love it graphically. So when you can show them this, we just win. It's, there's not even any question about it. Um, this is an example. Now, there's a case in Florida, if you don't know about it, it's the second largest case in the chiropractic history, basically. And it was a chiropractor named Richard Merritt was using dynamic EMG for evaluating injury in Florida. And uh, the state of Florida said, well, guess what? We don't see any validity to this tool and a bunch of other ones and removed it from, or tried to remove it from, the list of approved tools. Now, if they won this case, then we would be out of business. There would be no way to use objective data to support what you do as a chiropractor. But by winning this case, it would do the exact opposite. Now, the reason you haven't heard about it, this is like, you know, this case being so huge, is the fact that, unfortunately, the Florida Chiropractic Association testified against the chiropractic profession. It's public record. Um, no one knows exactly what the deal between the insurance companies was, but that's what happened. Unfortunately, they lost. And I was the only expert witness to testify on behalf of this chiropractor and the value of service EMG. And the case started out with the state of Florida, uh, Richard Merritt against the state of Florida. And then the state of Florida was joined by, believe it or not, all the insurance companies in the United States. So in the Supreme Court or the Superior Court case, you could see on one side there were 75 attorneys, which is what we were up against, and one on the other, which was ours. Uh, they went as far as to uh, buy our, our law firm and one of the uh, law firms that works for State Farm bought our law firm, so we lost our attorney. But, you know, karma has that we had we got a better attorney. The point is that we established the value. There's now a statute in Florida. And this decision, this case which went to the Supreme Court of Florida, is admissible in every state in the country uh, to establish admissibility of service EMG evidence. No judges want to, will want to go through this process this year plus long. It was two years total process. Um, and so, and what that led to, of course, was the AMA now recognizes, and you should be proud of yourselves, the AMA recognizes a chiropractic tool is the, as the gold standard. You can see the myovision down here being used to measure the combination of range of motion and service EMG. And, and what, what I was pointing out about the value of that combination is the fact we can now see guarding clearly when we do these tests. We can see how far they've been and if there's any muscle guarding that exists, and it's that simple. One of the things that's also a byproduct of this, and this was also um, something that I didn't really notice at first, and then we're all focused on, you know, proving what we're talking about, was that it, and this is just so huge to hear, I've gotten patients call me up crying on the phone. Why are they crying? Because they say the same thing every time. No one believed me. My family didn't believe me. My lawyer's not certain. And by the way, one of the reasons the attorneys love this is that it helps them know whether they have a good case or not up front. And that's what a lot of them want to know. And at the way the insurance industry is working right now is they're paying nothing. They're settling on no cases at all. They're going to court over everything they can at this point. This is going to, you're going to see this increase. Uh, they want to shut everybody down. But when they see the tests from you, the myovision tests, they actually do the opposite. They just write checks so they don't lose again. And that's why it's been so powerful. But it's amazing more than anything else to hear the patient being validated, and it reduces their stress level so much. You know what it's like to to feel attacked because you're making you you know you're not. No one knows whether you're really telling the truth or not. And you've got this soft tissue injury thing that's elusive. How do you prove that it's there? Well, you prove it with a myovision, and it helps the patient so much that we don't want to ignore the value of it that way. That it, it reduces their stress. And yes, there's a code for billing it, 96002 and 96004. Greg can explain that to you. The point is that was a battle that went on for years. Um, we established this, I think it was 2000, around the same time as the, as the Florida case. And again, this is why we win. It's data versus opinion. You can just sit back, present your data. They can argue all they want, blah, blah, blah. Um, I was even in a case against a very famous orthopedic surgeon and we won the case and uh, again he just said in my opinion this is what you know well i don't care about opinion i talk about data 
and data just presented. The jury says the data wins. I don't know what you're talking about, but this guy just proved it. This is an example. Now, he wrote a letter which he listed all the different, um, and you can, if you want this information, you can email david at myovation.com. I can send you this, but this is an example. Insurance company offered $500, full and final settlement. Uh, he presented the, the myovision evidence, and it led to them settling for thirty thousand five hundred. And this is—he lists a whole bunch of cases like this. Been very successful. Is, uh, yeah. So you were saying that the change in your practice—you got the myovision in six weeks. Yeah, six weeks. What happened now? Well, like I said, we were we were kind of really struggling, and, uh, and it's almost embarrassing to say how few we were seeing in a month, and then uh, what we were seeing in a month, we were seeing twice that. In Wow. So that means you would have increased by eight times by yeah. in, in six weeks. You said it. That's pretty amazing. So you said this far. Point there. This guy now has four practices, um, and that was in one year. He went from barely surviving to having four practices. He's so busy, four myovisions, and all because of the fact that he had something to show. And he describes this that he pivots. He pivots his whole treatment around the myovision. He uses it to develop. I just got an email from a guy yesterday that he goes, you know, the one care plan was signed up, one care plan paid for his whole machine, um, or for half his machine, sorry about that. And and he just, he said he just got the machine and his first person that he, you know, he said it was so worth it. And that's kind of what happens. I mean, if you think about it, with a lease payment of 230 a month, I guess the deal right now is that if you do it, there's some kind of a thing where, I don't understand these things, I don't do the stuff, I do the science side of it, but I know there's some kind of deal where it's 230 a month and there's no payments for three months. And you think about it, if you're getting paid 250 a test, one test a month pays for the whole lease. I don't understand how you can lose. And with the ADA tax credit, where you get half the money back anyways, um, up to ten thousand dollars you get back because we do meet ADA tax credit requirements. Uh, it, it's kind of silly. It's like half price basically. So, um, and again, it's important. Every warrior has a weapon. Service CMG is a weapon of choice. It truly is. We need to have our weapons, and everybody else has them these days. And we'd like you to have them too, which is why I developed this. Uh, sales type questions. You can call this number above. Um, this is from my market myovision.com and any technical questions you can ask me. One thing I wanted to show really quick was some cool things in the software we just did, just finishing this. Welcome to the software talks. This is really cool. We just uh, we just did uh, some new changes which allow you to do interpretations in about five minutes. But the other part is that, oops, get this open. I don't think it likes to do this with. Oh, maybe I need to close this. Hold on a second. Goodbye. Oh, my screen's locked. Look at that. Huh. Let's see if I can get it to have to do with go to meeting or something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why it's not allowing me to, it's sitting right here, but you can't see it, can you? I can tell. See your front screen. Okay, there we go. It's there. So if you see one of the things we've done, and people have this question, um, one of them is interpretation, but the other one has to do with what you see. How do you know what the data means? This is new. We haven't released this yet. We're going to be releasing this week. But we actually show now pictures showing you what the person's doing so you can bring up on the screen you can also go and change there's been so many new changes in the software in the last year and you can see you can actually make these images larger if you want to so now when you're actually using these printouts you can go okay I know what this means this person's doing a left lateral flexion right lateral flexion left rotation, et cetera, and it's marked based on where they are on the screen. So, And you can make it less cluttered by reducing the number of, of uh, 
pictures that are on there too so you can actually select oh, I only want to show um, neutral images or the completed action and you can see what it looks like so here they are doing these uh, you can add neutral to it initial action etc so a very cool way to show this um, also in the eScan thing you can go in here very simply <coughs> you can go into um, oops. you can go into the eScan setup and you can change the message to say whatever you want What's really cool is you're sending these emails and you're CCing your front desk, so you're actually collecting their email addresses too. You can change and say whatever you want to. You can go in, change the font color. Uh, you can change this message daily. It's been a very powerful tool for way more than you think of as far as the ability to get this information out there. One of the chiropractors I know started in practice, bought one a month, he told me before he started his practice, said, just buy a my and go out and do screenings. And he, he wrote me, and it's on our websites, uh, his first month in practice, everybody knew who he was because of the e-scan. He used a hotspot to send the test to people, and that hotspot it made it so that he can actually send them from all the different screenings he did. And uh, those that are not interested in screenings, you know, so many students getting out of school right now, they have nothing to do, uh, chiropractor students, and send, hire them to go out and do screenings for you. But he had, his first month in practice, he netted $22,000 because everybody knew who he was, and he was so busy. Um, that uh, that's the result of this as far as that side of it goes. And the PI side is obvious, that one we know about, and Greg's explained it to you. So do we have any questions at all, or is this is it at all clear? Any questions for David? Only no. With the, uh, with the static guarding, with guarding the muscles, how do you know that's not because of someone having pain and, and thinking that they're, is it because they're in the flexion position and they, they can't really take it? Are you talking about static or dynamic? So, David, did you hear that? No, explain. I heard a little bit. Explain. Please say it again, Greg. Was um, in, a, in a dynamic test. In a dynamic test. Uh, how can you determine whether the guarding is uh, really being done by the muscle or if, it's, if the patient is, is uh, predisposed to pain, if they're trying to resist pain? In dynamic, how can you tell if the patient really has guarding, for example, like inflection? or if it's uh, just their response to pain? Well, you know how someone has uh, uh, their resistance to doing something because they're afraid to Like apprehension? Pain. Oh, okay, yeah. Great question. Um, the Well, first of all, where we're really lucky is God made us so that our muscles in flexion go into complete relaxation as a reflex. So it's just like you can't control the, the reflex where you tap the knee, it's the same exact thing. The muscles in flexion go into relaxation and you cannot control it. Matter of fact, there's a, Triana did a study, six months, the only person he could find that could fake this test, which was obvious, was someone who could push their hands to the floor, which is extremely rare. Um, but the, 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 the pain response, the psychological response to fear does not really show up in this. We're looking at gross muscle firing, so it's, it's a great question, and, and you'd think it would, but the reality is that that might contribute maybe 2% or 5% of what you see on the screen. Um, those, those are involved. Try to, try to control the left and right sides of your back right now. Everyone try to do it. You'll see you have no voluntary control over any of it, but in motion, you can't control it even more. You, you have less control over it because of the fact that it is, again, a reflex, and uh, there's really no way to, to hide that. So, it, But it is a measure of pain. That's one of the points here is that it, it does correlate with pain. We've been afraid to say that in the past, but it's actually true. It's a, one of the, one of the uh, investigators for insurance companies, the BCI um, uh, Bureau of Criminal Investigations uh, guy, said, hey, this is a, a tool which tells you the patient's comfort level. And that's his interpretation, and he's the one that's trying to knock it down, you know, and he's, like, very impressed by it. So, yeah. Does that help answer your question? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Right. Any other questions for Dave? All right, no other questions. No further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I rest my case. All right. Thank you, Dave. Have yep. a good day. Yeah, bye-bye.